Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Um, first, we want to give you a very quick intro to the Experience Cloud ID service. And to do that, we're going to use a movie that I didn't actually see listed in the poll. Uh, can anyone describe or yell out the name of this movie? Clockwork Orange, right, which is kind of a weird thing to be starting out uh, 8.30 in the morning in <laughs> Vegas, but maybe it kind of works with Vegas. And the reason is because, well, the word orange. And, well, that's what I call it, is I call it orange, and till I think you said orange. Kind of orange. That sounded yeah. a little French yeah. to me, but I'll take it. <laughs> all good. Um, and so when we think about all the different ways in which we're collecting data, we're you know, also thinking about that when it comes to vocabulary. We've got all these different ways you can describe this fruit. And what the Experience Cloud ID service helps you do is realize that there's all these different platforms that are collecting data on your behalf at Adobe. So that's the analytics platform. That's Target for testing and, and optimization. Campaign for, uh, and Marketo for multi-channel campaigns. Uh, and then Ad Cloud and Audience Manager for media uh, and ad buying. And we need to think about that orange and all of the different ways in which it's described and used and, and uh, distinguished with all these different languages. And what the Experience Cloud ID service is, is it captures all of those IDs from all those different disparate systems and funnels it through our ID service and then disperses them out. So it says, okay, now we're all speaking the same language. So if it was... Orange? Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, <laughs> or orange or uh, any of the... Or naranja, I know that one. Um, or any of these other languages that are, describe orange, now it's actually dispersed and we're all speaking the same language when it comes to the Experience Cloud ID service and the Adobe Experience Cloud in general. And so the thinking there is that we can actually do more than that. So we can create audiences within analytics, we can create audiences within um, uh, Audience Manager and our advertising world, we can create uh, uh, IDs within email and audiences there within Adobe Campaign then that funnels through what we call the people core service, where we can then add a feature that we call customer attributes, which is how we can uh, import external and offline data directly into our audiences, directly into our uh, segments that we're creating, and then disperse those segments out for action. And if we think about it, that, that's actually probably the most important thing when it comes to analysis in my mind, is that we're doing more than just analyzing and looking at reports and saying this number's going up, this number's going down. But if we have something to do with that data afterwards, then we're actually winning. Then we're actually making a difference within the business. And that's one of the big differentiators when it comes to the Experience Cloud ID service, is helping you to create your segments and take action with them across the Experience Cloud. So come with me to uh, some more craziness when it comes to uh, A14 Experience Cloud ID. So yeah, I've, I've, I don't know, that one kind of freaked me out. I thought it was good. Uh, as basically the whole movie does. So uh, I want to continue. It looked like, again, about 50% of the room does not currently have A4T deployed. So I want to give you a quick intro into A4T. And so for this one, um, you know, one of my favorite scenes from, thank you, <laughs> um, is, uh, you know, Billy Madison is trying to go back to school. And so I want to kind of bring you back to school as well and give you a quick intro and description of what A for T is so that you know, we can all you know, stop yelling on the bus. So some reasons that customers are deploying A for T is they're recognizing that it takes too long to configure and launch a test. Or they like to use workspace for analysis, but uh, really can't see their test data in there. And there's lots and lots of reasons customers are using A for T these days. And the three main reasons that we think it makes sense to migrate from just simply having the Experience Cloud ID service, but going all the way through and getting the two solutions integrated is it gives you the ability to launch faster, think bigger, and dig deeper. So let me dig deeper into those three. So launch faster is a big one. So I already talked a little bit about that segment sharing capability. So once you've created a segment within analytics, you can click a checkbox to say share this to the rest of the Experience Cloud, and they show up here within the target interface so that you can more quickly um, deploy your targeted activities. In addition, you can also launch faster because you've got the ability to use an analytics metric, as is shown here, 
rather than just simply having to deploy additional code on your page. So that means the, as soon as you get these integrated, you don't have to worry about, well, I'm going to send an additional JavaScript on the page just to capture this metric. The metrics are already there from your report suites. Um, let's see, you can also choose which report suite, of course, it's coming from. But if we were to dig in a little further and my clicker were to work, then we could also start thinking bigger. And this is where you're able to import in your analyses within Target any metric coming from analytics in order to better analyze the data that's coming through. And that's also going to be applied to lift and confidence metrics as well. So for those of you that are spending more time in Target, that's a big value that you get out of A for T there, is having those analytics metrics there for you just simply as if they're a part of the platform. Then you can also apply your audiences as, uh, for analysis as well. And you can dig deeper. So uh, this is not my favorite slide in the world because it's showing reports and analytics. But I will suggest that today you should be using reports and analytics when you can if you need to use lift in confidence within your A for T reporting. Because that's the big differentiator simply of reports and analytics today is that when you're using A for T, you've got those metrics. You've got not only lift and confidence for the metrics that you apply them to, but activity impressions and activity conversions. So if you're trying to figure out, well, where should I be doing my analysis today? That's one place that you should be going if you need those additional metrics. So keep that in mind. However, you know me, I love my uh, analysis workspace. And so within analysis workspace, you do still have your activity data, your experience data, and you can break things down and, and deploy them there. We've, we've even seen some crazy, enormous calculated metrics that are applying lift and confidence within analysis workspace. And I will not be sharing those to you because like, we don't have enough room on these giant screens to show the entire calculated metric. Um, let's see. So now that you know that, you can enjoy the fact that you're now the smartest person alive. Continuing on. Uh, I want to quickly walk you through how to actually get A for T set up. And so if you're confused, you're looking around, you're just like John Travolta in Pulp Fiction, then you can start here. <clears throat> and so uh, I decided to go old school and get a QR code for you. But it's also nice and easy to go to. If you um, are unsure if you have A for T set up or you know you definitely don't, this is the process to go through it. So you start with a, a provisioning form. And by the way, you'll get all these slides later. Um, so if you miss it, but it's adobe.com slash go slash audiences. Um, so once you fill out that permissioning form, then you need to set up user permissioning within your company. It's just two steps. So make sure that your account has access to analytics and that your username has the all report access and web services access group, and then just simply that you have access to target. And that's it. Check, check. Another important thing, make sure you have recent code versions. This is one that we see folks all over the place when it comes to some of our customers. And so the minimum version that you'll want in order to get um, uh, A4T deployed is app measurement version 2.3, and then the experience cloud ID service version 2.1, and at.js version 0.9.6096. Don't you forget it, Till. Um, cool. And then the last one, of course, is QA. So once you've got this deployed, there's a really simple way to make sure that you've got it deployed. So if you're using the Experience Cloud Debugger, which is a plugin that lives within Chrome, it's, it couldn't be easier. So um, when you click that button in Chrome, you slide on over into the network area, which is there. And you'll see you've got your supplemental data ID. I feel, I feel very confident that I use the laser now. It's kind of nice. Here, there's Till. Um, so that's the only way that uh, you can 100% confirm that a is set up the way you need it to be. All right? And then you're like the wolf. You're ready to go in and tackle and do all the crazy cool things that Till's about to talk about. So where can a t be used? And I want to be perfectly uh, open. Where can it not be used? So uh, this is from one of my favorite movies, maybe one of the funniest openings to any movie of all time, uh, Super Troopers. And so I want to real quickly walk you through. I actually don't even remember why I put that GIF in there, but just know that there was a reason one time. Uh, so you, you can use A4T with all of these different uh, capabilities. So that's experience targeting, which is rules-based targeting. You can use it for A-B testing. You can use it for multivariate testing, recommendations, mobile app activities, redirect, and the integration with AEM 6.2 
for experienced fragments. However, there, is some, uh, there are some activities that you cannot use it for. So I want to make sure that I'm not suggesting something and you're like, great, I can use it everywhere. It's not quite everywhere. And so you cannot use A for T, which means you're going to be using just simply target for your analysis in these four places. So if you're using auto allocate, which is our ability to more quickly um, disperse traffic within target activities, so that rather than saying 50% sees A and 50% sees B, it's learning, so uh, more often it's showing the, uh, the, the winning experience. So that one, you won't be able to work with A for T. Uh, auto target as well, which is similar, but it's actually using your entire full set of behavioral history so that we're, we're using even more machine learning to ensure that you're making the best of every single next click. Automated personalization and target emailing are the other two in which uh, A for T will not be available. And so, you know, we're counting about all the different ways. See, I did have a reason for mentioning super troopers. I knew it. Uh, all the different ways that you can use A for T in, that, in which you cannot. Um, some other fun tips in terms of getting more value out of what you currently have. So multiple integrations equals more fun. So is everyone excited for sneaks? I know I am. I've been working on it for months. Uh, so we have Mindy Kaling coming in, and she has a lot of questions, and I'm sure she will tonight as well. And uh, so I want to walk you through a few different ways in which we're really excited about using basically 1 plus 1 equals 3, or 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 4, because we've got multiple integrations that when you add those integrations to other integrations, you get more value out of them. And this is a brand new one that was just deployed from one of our partners in which you can import your Salesforce data into analytics. And it's like, why are we talking about analytics here? And the reason is because when it's in analytics, it's then available in segments, and therefore available in Experience Cloud ID service and the people service, and you can target based on your Salesforce data getting imported. And so what that means is not only is it pushed into dimensions that you can analyze within analysis workspace, but it's also available in customer attributes, which means that you can analyze on the fly so that your next click is based on the segments that you've built uh, that define these different customer attributes. A really, really powerful way to, again, think about more, more integrations equals more value out of what you're getting within the tool. Another big one that you saw on the main stage at Keynote yesterday is for those of you that are using AdCloud, is we're now uh, integrating ad cloud display impressions, ad cloud uh, click-through data that um, you can also integrate into your target analyses. So think about as you're deploying that, don't just limit yourself to one integration or the other. Think about how can I uh, apply my activities and look them back to the marketing channels that were driving them. So now Mindy is like really smart right now. All right, so I want to uh, next up introduce Till Butner from DHL, who um, is joining us for the first time in the United States. Yes. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. You're doing uh, this so great. Yeah, I know all of German, Germany and German language now. Since really this happy. morning. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, and uh, why don't you introduce yourself yep. and show off some cool stuff from Germany, too. <laughs> so, hi all. My name is Till. Uh, I'm working for DHL, and I'm honored to talk today a little bit about our examples in personalization at A4T. Um, and my hometown is Bonn, and there is where also our headquarters is. And the city is famous for being the former capital city of Germany, Beethoven, I don't know if you know him, um, and Haribo. And um, I brought some original German Haribo with me. Um, why did I do this? I did do this because we have eight GIFs out of series and movies in my slide deck, not in his, in my slide deck. And I won't tell you where they're out. So I want you to name them. And if you name them and can name them and give them after the session to me the list, this is yours. In the case you don't know DHL, we excellent simply deliver since 1969. And we are the world's leading mail and logistics company with over half a million or more than half a million employees working in more than 220 countries and territories. And as I said, I'm responsible for digital analytics. I'm just one face. We are a team out of four, and I'm thankful to work with Kerstin, Jacob, and Nigel. Without them, I wouldn't have to show them anything this day. 
We try as a center of excellence to help our colleagues with analytics implementations, reportings, analysis, A-B tests and personalization, and we aim to provide or to generate insights out of our data. So, so much for the ads. Let's get ready to personalize content. But basics first, if you thought we directly go somewhere into analytics or into target, I'm sorry, I have to apologize, we don't. So requirements first and write them down. And why, why you should write your requirements for the stuff you do down is it helps you on the things to focus what matters. With this, you can define the goals to measure success for your personalization, which you hopefully then use A4T for to dig deeper into the data. And at least you evolve these requirements hopefully more than once, because if you write them down, you think about it. And if you think about it, perhaps there are more things where you say, okay, this can help me. Again, no target, no analytics, sorry. We need data to personalize. And not always you have all data in place, so set up additional tracking and connect other sources, as Eric just mentioned, to your system, because with this data, you get the audience you want to personalize for. And data is perhaps not the new oil, but for personalization, it's kind of the gasoline to run, run your car. And then you can define segments, customer attributes and profile, profile scripts. With this, you slide, off, slide out kind of the um, piece of cake which you want to eat. Or in the card um, example, it is the injection uh, pump to get the data working. And then you can build your first personalization. But test before you trust. And why should you test before you trust with personalization? Because you have sliced down your audience and you say, yeah, that's the people I want to target. And I used A4T to dig deeper into the data. Everything is fine. The problem is you don't know if you personalize if the content you have is the right content for the audience. So test your personalization against the status quo or use the new auto target for personalization experience. One word to this, as Eric mentioned before, here you can't use A4T. So if you do use auto target for personalization, you have to do it in target. And I want to do a short excursion into standards. And for me, this is really important, and they, that's why I want to take a minute to tell you um, about this and why standards really, really matters. Because most times, um, your data relies on front-end code. And now we're saying, why does it tell about data and front-end code? We're talking about personalization, A4T. All we do relies on the data which you look at. And if you look at the wrong data, which is coming out of the front-end code, you perhaps do the, right, uh, the wrong decisions. Giving you an example, this is our Chinese English page. In English, easy to track, easy to aggregate. This is the same page in Chinese. Easy to track, not easy to aggregate, even, even less easy to analyze, if you rely on front-end code. So this is... Um, data which you track out of front-end code in workspace. And as you can see, we have 4,000 or more than 4,000 entries in this table. This is not aggregated at all. And you see um, the sixth, the seventh, and the third uh, entry is not in English. So I can't read it because I'm not, I'm not native in these languages. If you have a data layer in place where you track your data out and the, um, the, the information in the data layer is all in English, this is the outcome for workspace. And you see it is the same table than the one before, but you just have roundish 80 entries because now they are all aggregated and you can uh, analyze this even better. So all C-level executives or manager in this room, please do me a favor and help your analysts to rely on standards, because then you really get value out of your data. Okay, let me entertain you. Who in here likes Haribo? Hands up. 
Okay, a few. Uh, who of you who likes Haribo don't like uh, licorice? Okay, so you said you don't like licorice. Do you like gummy bears? Okay, you like gummy bears? Yeah, okay. Why is this important? Why do I make this example? Because if you just rely on one metric, I would throw a Haribo at you, but it would be just licorice. You say, ugh, ugh, licorice, blah. Um, if I use A for T, I would have more data. And then I know, oh, these people don't like licorice, but they like Haribo. So, Eric, do me a favor. What give, am I doing? give them Haribo, but gummy bears. Because with this, so the one in front, the man, the woman there, and Jen. And but again, why is, this, why is this important? This is important because if you know more about the people, um, yes. But why is this important? This is important because now I can personalize for these people. I wouldn't recommend, recommend them licorice if I know they don't like it. This is our customer intelligence in a nutshell. We know nothing about the user. We have ESI, CID. We track a few informations. They submit a form. They search for warehousing. We put this all in analytics or in our brain, uh, or in our database. We analyze this. We put it back into target. We know it's a customer, perhaps from our business unit supply chain. And then the home page is personalized. You thought that's all? No, for sure it isn't. Let's dig a little bit deeper in. So again, in a nutshell, but the tech view. First, we track data into analytics. We build segments, and with the ECID, they are available in the Experience Cloud. We have over 1 million forms submitted in a year with uh, 38 languages around it. We translate them, again, that's why standard matters, and then classify them. And this classification information is going into profiles in uh, the customer attributes. We use Target. We use in Target the recommendation engine to you know even more about the user. Then there's demand base, which enrich our profile data in Target and in analytics. The masterpiece in here is A4T because everything we do in, in, in Target, we get back into analytics and can understand even better what's happening there. Before AAM 6.4, we do everything in Target if we personalize. After uh, 6.4, we use or we will use experience fragments. And then you have a personalized website. There's even more. We use Usabilla for feedback which again goes into analytics and gives us information. We use Decibel to get uh, to know the experience level of the users and also use their session recording to understand what's happening there. And hopefully we will get Eloqua into this picture too. So this is the whole picture, nothing more. <laughs> Let's stay in Wonderland. Let me split this into a few parts. The first one is the easy one. We go with analytic segments. You can build an analytic segment where you say, mm, I want to personalize for people who clicked on a portal link. Then we have in here, and you said, we have, oh, wonderful. Uh, we have in here, they clicked at least twice on a link on a specific page, wonderful. Um, we make this available for the experience cloud at least for the last 90 days. But hint, just 20 million audience members are possible in these segments. And we say, oh, that could be a problem. If you have more than 20 million audience members, you're doing something wrong for personalization. Then go into the people uh, cloud area, or how it's called. Core service. Cross service, yeah. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> um, in there, you have the audience library, and in the audience library, you can see all the shared segments with the current size and the active status. Within Target, you can create 
some HTML. And this is the original website. We know that people clicked on this portal link on top, but now as we know that what portal there are more than one, there's more than one portal behind, which portal they really uh, wanted to go for, we can personalize and give them a drop down and say, this was your recent profile, uh, portal, try it again or use it again. We have even a moderate version where we use demand based into the recommendations. Here we use demand based um, data in the visitor profile. So we're looking for people out of the industry, software, and technology. Where the company stays in Utah, in the US. Don't know. There should be some. A hint, again, visitor profiles are just stored for two weeks. That not, that's really not so much. So if you want to um, extend them, go to customer care. They can extend them to 90 days. Then we enrich this with another audience where we use the recommendations engine. So um, we have we used the recommendations to see if people are interested in articles or detail pages on our site. And we have more than 4,000 knowledge assets, kind of. And we want to take these knowledge assets to the right persons and not throw them at all of you. So we look for people who are interested in insights. And um, we do all this in a time frame from the 26th of March until the 28th of March. There's something happening. And if you do all of these, and these are single audiences because we perhaps want to reuse them after, so we don't put them all in one audience, we split them up. We split them up because you now can combine these audience into one big audience. So change your audience and then mark the ones you want to have and hit combine multiple audience. Important here is use an end operator and not an or operator because you want to have them in each of these um, in. You can reference your customer profiles or um, the um, visitor profiles in the HTML, really easy. And this is in target, the preview. But if you go on our website, this could be then the um, headline for employees out of a software technology company in Uter that they can subscribe our newsletter. Yeah, I saw that this morning. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Another one? Good. I want to show you a fully orchestrated version of this. So demand-based data, recommendations engine, analytics segments, our customer attributes out of our form data, all together in one. I thought about how sh should I do this, because this screen, even if they are big like this, they are too small to show this in pictures. So apologize, but I, I will do this later just in text and try to guide you through. Here we use also feedback data out of Usabilla. This is um, important, as Eric said before, if you extend the data in analytics to understand your users better, you can use this data in segments, then in target again to personalize for them. So if you have negative feedback, you can personalize for them, like dislike, uh, dislike or hate. Or if you have helpful feedback, like suggestions, you can also personalize this for them. So we use analytics segments. So someone searched for customer care or customer services, and then A had feedback answer equal suggestion, or B, dislike. We use demand base where we know the company name or don't know the company name. We use our form analysis, and out of this, we know that uh, it is a customer or we don't have this information. And we use the recommendations engine, so we know that someone um, has viewed our FAQs or not. So let's go into an example. If someone 
did a suggestion, the company name exists, the person is a customer, and has consumed the FAQs and searched for customer service. Then we show them the customer service chat because it is not the highest expensive um, version of customer service, but kind of the middle range. And it is a customer, so we want to satisfy them. And we thank you for the feedback at the same time. Then it is a customer who dislikes what we do. We know the company name, and we know that the person doesn't or hasn't seen the FAQs. Then we can show them first the FAQ link below the customer care phone number, because it is the expensive um, channel for customer care, but it is a customer, right? So we want to satisfy them. And then we apologize because they dislike what they see before. And in the end, we have, as, ex as an example, uh, feedback which is dislike, the company name doesn't exist, we know nothing, and we know that the user hasn't seen the feedback. So then we thank anonymously for the feedback, we link to the FAQs and we show them an email address. What this shows for you, or does, should show for you, is there are no borders. If you have data in your analytics platform, and it doesn't matter if it's just your data from your platform, if it's external data which you connect, the more data you have, the, be the better the profile data is for the audience you want to reach, and it's easier to slice kind of the audience out of the full cake which you want to reach. Okay. Some A4T data. We set up all our personalization and tests with specific testing goals. We have 10 of them which are just for testing and personalization out there. We reuse them every time, so um, we could have at least 10 tests next to each other. Um, it, if we would need more, we'll just add more, but um, what I want to show you here is um, defined some testing goals which we can reuse so they are in place and everyone knows that they are in place. Add them in the golden settings and target for your rapid suite and then set the testing goal. Within Rapids and Analytics, you then, as Eric mentioned before, can see the lift and the confidence. And Hiller from 33 Sticks showed yesterday a version from a calculated metric how to do this in Workspace also. So have a look for her session the recorded session from her. If you want to work in workspace with this data, yes, it's harder to look for a lift in confidence, but as you have all your targets and your, so your, your um, experiences in workspace available, you can put them in a drop-down and easily switch between your personalizations or um, tests um, so, and to see how it changes between the audiences. And even better, you can use this in a virtual rapid suite. You know, now you say, uh, input field versus virtual, virtual rapid suite. Perhaps the input field is easier. Yes, it is. But out of governance reasons, this is inter more interesting because you can assign someone who's um, responsible for personalization just this rapid suite so they can look at their data but not, not, nothing else. Was it too much? Was it too fast? There's Adobe Spark page where hopefully everything is covered. Otherwise, reach out to me on Twitter. I would like to help you with this set, what you're waiting for. Start your personalization. All right, Over to you, you, Eric. So um, if you've been writing down all of the different gifts from movies and shows from Tills, come on up afterwards, and he's got what, this for you. Arbo. I don't know if it's licorice or... Or gummy it's a combination of everything. <laughs> right, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to apply to everybody. So um, I want to talk a little bit about what's coming. And so this is what I'm most excited about. It's what our product teams are most excited about is what's coming next. So we want to kind of give you a glimpse into where we're heading. And so the, you know, one of my favorites from Back to the Future, I need some milk, chocolate. And so I'm getting excited about what's coming next. And uh, so first of all, 
This is one that we've been getting tons and tons of requests for over the years, which is optimizing the speed in which segments are published and shared across the Experience Cloud. So today, you may or may not be aware, it takes between 24 and 48 hours. We're looking to decrease that down by 90%, so it's four hours or less, which is a huge, huge uh, increase. Thank you. And Till's excited for yeah. it. Um, that won't require any implementation changes or any changes to your setting. Just simply, we'll deploy it, and automatically, you'll have that added to your uh, A4T integration. And so that's one that we're actively working on, so get excited for that one soon. Um, the next one is also we're increasing the number of shared segments that you can just simply create. Today, you've got a maximum of 20, which seems really low to me, so why not bring it all the way up to 75? So that uh, is something also... All right. That is also something that will be coming soon to an analytics and target near you. Next one, we're starting to go a little bit further into the future. And so for this one, we're really excited about something that we've, we've been working on in the labs, which is bringing um, an a for t focused panel right to analysis workspace, which does a whole number of things. First of all, you've got an automatic sync of the target activity date range within your panel. So that way, as the, uh, as the, if the activity is still running, then you, can just simply, you don't have to worry about knowing, OK, when did, this target act, when did this target activity actually start? And should I limit my panel? It'll automatically be synced. Beautiful. Um, the other fun thing there is you can actually see lift in confidence within analysis workspace without having to build a massive, massive calculation. So that's the next really big thing we're excited about. <laughs> and of course, you can then apply that to any visualizations within workspace. Um, which I apparently have a whole slide for. And um, so, yeah, so we're looking to give you the ability to analyze your target activity with Lyft, with confidence, and today um, the activity impressions and activity conversions data is not one-to-one -one with what's in reports and analytics and target. And so that's another one that, that will come out with the Lyft and confidence fixes. And that last bullet is maybe one that you skipped over which is the ability to send A for T data from target activities to more than one report suite at a time, which I think is really, really valuable for a number of our customers. So that way, if you have one activity, you can send it to report suite A, report suite B, and report suite C if, if you so desire. Are you excited about that? Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. So right. looking at if you have more than one um, property, then working with, then it's amazing. Right? Good. Hey, amazing. You know, why don't I give you some... some <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, and so that's everything we have around where we're heading. Um, I also want to give you one additional uh, resource to keep an eye on, which is Adobe Lee slash A for T. If you want to dig into any of these different items that we talked through today, it's another way to, to uh, get the latest and greatest when it comes to that integration. All right, if you wrote down those animated GIFs, come on up and talk to Till. He's got about five pounds of candy for you. Yep. All right? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Enjoy Thank you, everyone. Bye.